My name is Shannon. I'm a wife, a mom, and a Shay Shay. I'm a speaker, an author, and a recording artist. But most importantly, I am a child of God. Every day, I seek to live out my faith with truth and transparency. But most days, I just need grace in high heels. Hello and welcome to this edition of Grace in High Heels. I'm your host, Shannon Perry, and we have a fantastic show planned for you today. Today's special guest is award-winning author and speaker, Karen Pashley. Karen will walk us through some of the darkest days that a woman can face and how God delivers right in the middle of those tough times with his love. She'll also be showing us how to cook up an incredible recipe as the founder of Girls Dine In. So she's bringing us great food from the heart and the table. But first, the cute shoe feature of the day. Adding polka dots to your wardrobe is always fun. As my mama always said, false eyelashes and cute shoes make everything better. And speaking of cute, thanks to all of you who send us pictures of your pets doing the cutest thing. Today's picture comes from Jamie with her pet cow, Dasher. That is the cutest picture of someone loving on their cow that I've ever seen. Dasher, you're so affectionate. Oh, he's precious. Thank you, Jamie, for sending us the cutest cow ever. Hey, send us your pet having their cutest moment, and they could be a star right here on Grace in High Heels. Speaking of Grace, let's hear from a member of our Grace and Guts Girls Book Club. Grace and Guts is my latest book that teaches how to throw the knockout punch to the 12 areas women say they struggle with the most. Today's question comes from Cindy. Hi Shannon, my question comes from Chapter 3 of Grace and Guts. I'm pretty confident, but every now and then I fight feelings of insecurity. Can you give me some scripture that will help me when I'm feeling insecure? Thanks. Hey, Cindy, thanks so much for your question. In chapter three, I share a very funny and personal story of what happened to me when I first started speaking that not only made me totally insecure, but it made me want to run off the stage. When we feel insecure or inferior, we do things that we wouldn't normally do a lot of times, but our feelings can't always be trusted because they're all over the place. We may feel insecure, but God's given us a lot of reminders in the Bible that we don't have to live with insecurity and inferiority. Hey, I've listed a lot of scripture at the end of chapter three that reminds us that we can throw the knockout punch to inferiority and insecurity in our life. Deuteronomy 28, 13 says, we're the head and not the tail. First Corinthians 12, 27 reminds us that we're the body of Christ and Satan has no power over us. If you'd like more scripture that will help you when you feel inferior, be sure to check out the end of chapter three. If you haven't read Grace and Guts, you can pick up a copy wherever books are sold and let it encourage you with real truth from God's word and practical ways to win over whatever you're battling. If you'd like to climb in the ring and join the Grace and Guts Girls Book Club, it's free. Log on to shannonperry.com and send us your thoughts and you could be in the next video we share. Women are warriors. We fight for our families, our friends, and our faith. But we're often hesitant to enter the ring when it comes to caring for ourselves. Our opponent comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we've already been promised that we'll win the round when we find the guts to enter the ring and the grace to endure the fight.
Well, our first guest is no stranger here on Grace and High Heels. Karen Pashley is usually in our Grace Kitchen cooking up something amazing, but today she's here to share her incredible story of the joys and heartaches that have helped her understand what it really means to be loved by God. And Karen, I'm so excited that we're out of the kitchen and just getting to sit here, have a normal conversation and just talking about you and all of the things that you have been through, the great things and the hardships. Um, talk to us a little bit. You know what it's like to go through some hardships and some dark times. You've had an illness. You found out one of your daughters had an addiction. Um, tell us about those days. Life was going really well and uh, I was diagnosed with a uh, an illness that I was unfamiliar with, had never heard the name of before, had no idea what it meant for my life. It's called Meniere's disease and it's, um, it's fairly rare, um, but it begins with all kinds of uh, strange symptoms, vertigo and hearing loss and um, dizziness and just all sorts of things. And uh, life was okay for a few years and I was able to manage things pretty well and continue with my very busy life. And, all of the activities that I love to do. But in the midst of that, uh, things didn't go according to plan and the disease deteriorated to the point where it was nearly debilitated for a couple of years. Um, they had destroyed all the hearing in my right ear um, and my balanced nerve, so I only had one balanced nerve left. I was losing most of the hearing in my left ear at the same time and um, experiencing just horrific bouts of spinning vertigo that would last three, four, five hours at a time. Um, so it was a really dark time because as a believer who believes in the healer and who'd been prayed for so many, 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 many times and was trusting God for my healing and claiming the word of God over my life and yet it just seemed that the more I did that, the worse things were getting and the, the farther I sunk into uh, the the uh, depths of this illness that can be very, very difficult to live with. And it was right about that time that I was kind of at the lowest of the low that uh, another pothole came into our life. We found out, um, which was a blessing in disguise, that one of our children was struggling with opiate addiction. Uh, we had no idea, absolutely none, as most families don't. It was the, the pit that I never saw myself falling that deeply into, honestly. It was a darkness that I, as a believer, really began to question. Really, God? Like, really? <laughs> and I think we've all been there. I know my mom was diagnosed with cancer several years ago, and I remember all the nights that I laid in bed and, and just prayed and asked God to heal her. And one night, I just remember him. He met me right where I was, and I knew it was him. But I also remember the answer was no, and she's in heaven now. And sometimes when we're going through that, we just keep praying and, and it, like you said, it gets worse and we think, God, where are you? And that stretches our face so much. So you wrote a book called Precious in His Sight out of that. Tell us a little bit about that book. I was writing most of the time during my um, years with Meniere's disease and uh, had the book was almost finished and I was at the point of editing and preparing to send it off for uh, publication and so forth and that was when everything hit the fan with our daughter. God took me through a new level of tra trust and faith and a, a, a completely different perspective of what it means to let go of the things that we hold so dearly and the outcomes that we expect and, um, and through that process I went back in and basically rewrote most of the book because wow. I felt I had to deepen right. the the expression of pain and struggle that my characters would go through because as a believer and as a Christian, my goal was that this book would not just reach Christian readers, but that it would reach a wider audience. One of your characters is Sugar, and through her, you teach women how to have joy and strength even in the middle of the difficult times. Karen, how do we find joy? I mean, the last thing we think about is having joy because most of the time we equate it to happiness. But joy is so much deeper. How do we find joy and strength in the midst of those deepest, darkest, hardest places in our life? I'll tell you, for me, it was, I've been a Christian for 34 years. And I would say for 25 of those years, I asked myself that same question secretly all the time. Where's the joy? 
yeah, there's moments of happiness, but where is the, where, where's that abiding joy? And through my own experiences that we just talked about and through walking my characters through their difficult times in the book, um, God really opened my eyes to the fact that we just need to let go of what our perceptions are of who he is because he's so much bigger than what we think and if we uh, if we attach our our joy to how things are going in our life most of us are going to be not very full of joy. sorely disappointed well obviously you love to cook because we're doing that here on grace and high heels and we're so grateful for you uh, but you also had the passion to get women together and to just come to your kitchen for lack of better words, just come on in and let's have a girls dine in. Tell us yeah. about that. Yeah, that, that is a, a, a really special part of my life. Um, girls dine in started as a way for me to connect with other women. There again, asking the Lord, what am I passionate about? What, you know, sometimes we forget to just find our passion in life. We're busy doing all these other things and driving our kids everywhere. and and all of that and I looked around and I saw that there were a lot of women that were very busy but had very little outlet to just be a girl and just get together and hang out and, and no agenda and so I started Girls Dine In to bring uh, groups of women together most of them don't know each other um, they come to my kitchen and we have a we do a four course meal it's always a themes event and uh, uh, we've done every type of food that is course, so as you can imagine, and, um, and they love. We it. all want to know your address, yeah. right? Well, you're welcome. <laughs> if you're in Nashville, we all want to come yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah. The list that. is long, but you're welcome to join the list. But what a great sense of community because how many women are now on social media trying to get their connection? And of course, we know that nothing on social media is always accurate right. uh, about what's really happening. So what a great way to sit down and to connect. That's actually with the, each the other. whole purpose of it. And and the cooking is fun, and the meal is great. But at the end of the night, when I'm bone tired from putting this thing together, which just takes, you know, two or three days, and I look down from the balcony or whatever down into my living room, and I see all these women sitting cross-legged on my living room floor, sharing, talking, praying together, laughing together, meeting one another for the first time, um, new friendships being formed. It makes it so worthwhile, and I think that's really my purpose is to, to to advocate and promote for women to um, to connect. Let's talk about that for a minute because we may have some people who are watching today who say, you know, I feel like I don't ever have a connection. I feel very lonely. I don't want anybody to know. It may not even look like they're lonely on the outside. They may have that great church face put on, but underneath they're really hurting. They're really lonely. What would you say to those women who are watching? Well, first of all, I. My heart goes out to them because I know what it feels like to be lonely. When you're isolated in an illness where you can barely leave your house, it can get lonely. That's where we find our sustenance and our, and our, and our food, our bread in Jesus alone. So I encourage people, first of all, to, to get alone with Christ. He is the one who's going to complete you. He's the one that's going to, when you have a connection with the Lord that is deep and and friendly and open and vulnerable he's going to make a way he is the way maker and he can make a way for you to um to make connections and i I've, i i just tell women all the time we have not because we ask not ask the lord say lord i'm i i, I would i long for connection with other women find me a way a place send me just one friend See, yeah, yes and, and you know he is faithful to us in that way and he he loves for us to have connection he we're we are created for relationship and so i, I think that's a, an honest and a and a um a prayer that can be um uttered and that the lord will be faithful to you for sure karen thank you so much for coming on today to encourage us to have community to have connection you're so right we're built for that the book is Precious in His Sight. I encourage you to pick up a copy wherever books are sold. And speaking of Karen, we're going to cook with Karen coming up right after this. Thank you. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your Lord, you never have to take another negative word from another person inside of your heart about yourself because if it can't be backed up in here, it's not the truth. 
tonight I had a great time listening to Shannon and it was beneficial as a mom of little ones just knowing that sometimes when we get lost in the chaos of being a mom that there's a purpose for our life. She came walking in that bathroom she said, what is the matter with you? I said, I am hung in the toilet paper roll holder. <laughs> Shannon is the woman that you want to come and speak to your ladies because she's funny, she's full of life, she loves Jesus, and it comes through so clearly. Well, we are back in the Grace Kitchen with none other than author, speaker, and amazing cook, Karen Pashley. Karen, what are we making today? Okay, Shannon, today we're going to do something that seems simple, and it is simple, but it looks really nice. So you know when you go to a nice restaurant and you order a salad yes. and there's kind of like nothing in it, but it tastes fantastic. Right? Because of how it looks. How it, it looks better. and it's just simple ingredients, but put together in such a way that you really get the full impact of the flavors of the yes. salad, really enjoy it. I think a lot of people overdo their salads. They put everything in the in this refrigerator into their salad. And this is a nice um, salad that I love to prepare at home, either as an entree or as a, as a nice accompaniment to maybe a, a piece of broiled salmon, or it goes really well with salmon or chicken, grilled chicken. So we're gonna start, it's an arugula salad with uh, a warm arugula salad with sauteed mushrooms and shaved Parmesan cheese. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the dressing because oh, dressing is so simple to make. Do you make dressing at home? I go to the grocery store and they make it for me. Okay, so, I'm gonna show you how to make this simple vinaigrette, a nice lemon vinaigrette. It's healthier for you, it tastes fantastic, Got and it. it's just, you can whip it up in a matter of minutes. All right? Just whip it so up. So we're gonna start with, this is the juice of one lemon and a couple of tablespoons of white wine vinegar. We'll put okay. In there. Next, we're gonna add um, a tablespoon of shallots. Shallots. Yes, and the shallot is kind of like, a clove of garlic and it. Ooh, I was gonna say that yeah. shallot smells awfully it's, strong. It's, yeah, well, it's it's a combo of kind of like an onion and a garlic mixed together. Yes, it is. Um, it adds a really nice. So you want to be sure to grab a breath mint after yes. you eat this. And then we're gonna add okay. a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Okay, a teaspoon of Dijon yeah. mustard, and yep. she has everything so perfectly measured out. Well, okay. and it, you know, and you don't have yep. to. Perfect. That's the nice thing about salad dressing. Really, this right? is up to your taste. If you don't like mustard, don't add the mustard. Oh, okay. But we already added it, so you can. We it like out. it. Okay. So this is just your spices. We've just got a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Again, okay. you can add more or less to your taste. This gotcha. is just how I like to make it. Okay. Okay. So we are going to whisk that together. And you can just whisk. Karen likes to whisk. I do like to whisk. Yes, we're here. just going to use a that. fork and just kind of blend that together. We're whisking. We're whisking. Easy. She's so patient because she knows I don't cook. So she taught me to whisk. There yes. you go. You're getting pretty good at the whisking. I'm getting yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, Every show I'm lesson. getting better at whisking. Right, right. Yes. You can whisk. Okay, now. so now here's the good part. This is our okay. well, We're going to um, emulsify the good. dressing. <clears throat> emulsifying is when Go ahead and keep on whisking. Emulsifying is when you slowly drizzle olive oil into, or any kind of oil for that matter, into something else. Okay. And as you do, it should blend nicely. It shouldn't um, separate. Now, if I'm doing this by myself, I need to whisk with this other. Oh, slowly. Yeah. Sorry. Slowly. Slowly. Yeah. You okay. can also do this go. in a stand mixer if you're like, you know, you're, you're tired of doing this for five minutes. It really doesn't take that long. The faster you go, the quicker it goes. Okay. But um, it, if you have a, like a, workout. a blender that anything. has one of those nice single serve cups that we use for smoothies and such, okay. you can just throw all your ingredients right in there and emulsify it together. And see how that is nicely blended. What okay. I love is your arm never moves. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so here's the secret to a nicely plated salad. You want to dress your greens before you plate the salad, before you put everything on, because you know what happens when you make the salad and then you toss it and all the good stuff goes to the bottom. And yeah, you serve it all it, runs like, through. Oh, where's all the good oh, stuff? Oh, that's what I've been doing wrong. Right, so go okay. ahead and um, and we're just going to drizzle this on. We're going to use uh, baby arugula today, and the reason for that is because um, this salad needs something a little bit hearty to stand up to it, because we have mushrooms, which are of a very delicate flavor, okay. and we have uh, our cheese, and that's about it. So we want a yeah, nice, toss that, yeah, go ahead and toss that, 
And again, that's probably more dressing than what we're gonna need for that amount, but that's okay. We'll just whisk, take that off the top. Now, here's what I love to do. So go ahead and plate just a little mound of salad, like, you know, nice round. Here you go. That's pretty. Okay, we're gonna top that. That's okay. all on my cooking expertise. There yeah. you go. So sauteing mushrooms is super easy, Ooh, right? You this just, smells so good. just throw them in a pan with some butter, a little salt, a little pepper. Uh, you can add a little garlic if you want to. Okay. And so I like to serve this warm. Again, as a side dish with dinner. It's just a really nice side dish. So there's your sauteed mushrooms. Now, the kicker is we're gonna add, you can scoop that down a little okay. bit. Shaved Parmesan. Oh. You can buy it in the store in a container. Yes, you can. Just pick it up. Or you can shave it yourself. And the reason I like to do this is because you get thicker pieces, fresh. it tastes fresher, and I like to use a vegetable peeler. So you want to give that a whirl? Sure. So you just... Here's more of my cooking expertise. There you go. Work. Just shave that. There you go. Look how you're a natural. Whoops. That's a lot. That's good. Was it good? That looks great. Oh, thank See, you're you. So fat. You're like a you're like a little sous chef. Like here. a little thing when they come to your table at the restaurant. Would you like some fresh parmesan? Okay, there you go. Yes, sorry. That looks really pretty. That was so easy. There you go. You can top it with a little cracked pepper, and there you have it. That is beautiful. Would you like to try? Oh, I'm gonna try it. She's gonna try it, folks. Oh, let's see. I know you like the mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms, but. You don't like mushrooms? Who doesn't like mushrooms? But it's pretty. Okay. If you like mushrooms, this is your salad. Love her. <laughs> Be sure to go to KarenPashley.com. She has a book out. She's an author, speaker, has so much going on, and she has so much grace for cooking here with me in the Grace Kitchen. So be sure to join her on her website. Get to know Karen. And are you going to have some recipes? at some point. Where, where can we find your recipes? Well, I have a Girls Dine In Facebook page and you're there welcome you go. to go there and you can find a whole lot of recipes. And wh there. where is that? Where can they find that? Facebook at Girls Dine In. There you go. Be sure to visit Karen. You know, just like I need grace to be able to cook up great food with Karen, I will forever need the grace of God in my life. We all face those moments when we do need Him to do what only He can do. But the truth is, we need Him every moment. So here's today's quick clip of grace from the road just for you. You ever been, you ever had a real fear that kept you stuck? It was almost like it paralyzed you. I had a real fear about a couple of years ago. I was in the Nashville airport and I was getting ready to board a plane. I was with my mom. My mom was my secretary and my best friend. I lost her last March. But she traveled everywhere with me. And we were sitting down at the, at the gate, and it was time to get on the plane. And I'm sorry, guys. I know there's men in the room, but i got to tell the story. And I had to go to the bathroom. Now, I looked over at my mama, and I said, I've got to go to the bathroom. And she said, well, you can't go to the bathroom. The plane's fixing to take off. I thought, now, isn't it something like a something 40-something-year-old woman when my mama is still telling me when I can and can't go to the bathroom? <laughs> so I got up, and I walked down to the bathroom, and I had on one of those long, uh, those hoodies that has those long strings on it with the big grommets at the bottom. You know what I'm talking about? And I've learned a new word since I've been traveling. I was telling this story in a church, and a little lady came up to me, and she said, Honey, we don't say the word squat in church. <laughs> We say the word hover. <laughs> so I was in the bathroom hovering. hovering. Now, if you have ever hovered for very long, <laughs> you know what happens, right? You can't feel your legs in about five minutes. Well, I was in the bathroom hovering, and I had on the, that sweatshirt that had that long string on it with those big grommets at the bottom. And um, I was hovering, and I reached over. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I reached over to get the toilet paper off the toilet paper roll holder. And as I did, that toilet paper holder was open. And somehow, my string got rolled up into the open end of that toilet paper holder. 
And the harder I pulled on that string, the closer my head got to the wall of the bathroom. I thought, now I'm going to be here at midnight. That little man's going to open the door with the little yellow sign. I'm going to be saying, hey, my mama's going to be back in Houston. And listen, when we have a fear, we have a real fear, we've got to call on the one who can do something about it, right? <laughs> so I called on the one that I knew could help me. At the top of my lungs, I hollered, Mom! <laughs> Mother! Well, she heard me two doors down. She came walking in that bathroom. She said, what is the matter with you? I said, I am hung in the toilet paper roll holder. <laughs> she said, well, open the door. I said, I can't. <laughs> now, my mama, <laughs> y'all are fun. Now, my mama is one of the most sophisticated little Southern Belle ladies you could have ever seen. She had on those little clippity-clip shoes and that little broomstick skirt. I'm still hovering. I can't feel anything by now. It's gone. And the next thing I know, she's coming underneath the opening of the bathroom door. And the whole time she's coming over, all I'm getting is she's wishing that skirt. So, I can't believe you did this. What is the matter with you? What were you thinking? And all I could think is, wow. Well, she got right up in front of me. Now, mamas, when our babies are in trouble, what are we going to do? We're going to help them out, right? She did not. She put her finger right in front of my face, and she said, don't you ever do this again. We picked little pieces of toilet paper up there. We got me out of there, and we walked down, and they were fixing to close the door to the plane. I walked up. I had my bag, and I was pulling it, and that lady said, Honey, you almost missed the plane. I didn't think twice. I walked right by her. I said, Honey, you don't know what you just missed, and I just kept on walking. Because when we have a real fear, we've got to call on the one who can do something about it. Amen. If your group is hosting an upcoming retreat, conference, or event for your ladies, drop me an email or give our office a call at the number you see on the screen because I would love to be your speaker and meet you in person. You can learn more about all the topics I offer when you visit shannonperry.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. And until next time, know you're loved and keep walking in God's grace. To purchase a copy of Shannon's teaching materials, including her latest book, Grace and Guts, visit shannonperry.com. Grace and High Heels TV is made possible by the friends and partners of Shannon Perry Ministries. Your tax-deductible donation is an investment into eternity, and together we will reach viewers with the life-changing truth of God's Word. To give, visit shannonperry.com. And thank you for your prayerful and generous support.